Thursday, June 24th, 2021, Marneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So today we're going to talk about how the symptoms of the crack up boom or currency collapse or hyperinflation, whatever you want to call it, are all around us. Uh, before I go into the subject, though, just talk about a few things that are happening uh, out there as it pertains to the uh, uh, cyber situation. Uh, we've seen uh, in the last few months that ha there have been uh, hacks or cyber attacks uh, on uh, industries like the uh, energy industry, the colonial pipeline um, that transports all the gasoline for the, not all the gasoline, but a, a lot of it from Texas to, to the Eastern seaboard in the US. Uh, we saw the meat packing uh, company JBS be hacked as well. Uh, we've probably talked about, maybe you uh, have heard about Cyber Polygon, which is kind of a cyber uh, event exercise that's going to be organized by the World Economic Forum and the people that partner with them uh, on July 9th. So it's interesting uh, that yesterday we got the news that John McAfee, uh, died in prison in Spain. Uh, I think uh, it was also decided yesterday that he was going to be extradited to the U.S. on tax evasion charges. But John McAfee, of course, built the biggest uh, antivirus uh, business. Uh, I think most people who have been around for a while probably have had uh, McAfee antivirus. It's quite synonymous with antivirus. So, what do I think about uh, McAfee? Very interesting character, wild character, I would say. But uh, I've listened to what he said in the past, and I agree with him 100% about uh, philosophy of government or of non-government, really. He was really kind of uh, an anar anarcho-capitalist, or someone who didn't really trust government that much. So uh, just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying uh, anything here. I I'm just trying to put two and two together. It's very interesting though, isn't it? That uh, Cyber Polygon is, is uh, coming out. Uh, they're starting on July 9th. And the man who's kind of an enemy of the state, who, who was, uh, uh, a giant in terms of blocking hacking uh, dies right and uh, I remember him saying uh, the the best people uh, to hire he said in my business are hackers because they know uh, what to do so that was John McAfee uh, what else is out there uh, well this is a little bit of good news for uh, UK pensioners might be good news we don't know yet but uh, there's a, a rule here called triple lock, and that's for the state pensions. And the rule was set up by the conservative government, I, I think, in 2011. They were in a co coalition, of course, with the liberal Democrats. Uh, the rule is that state pensions are adjusted by at least 2.5% a year increase. Uh, and uh, they're also adjusted if average earnings... Uh, wage earnings are higher than 2.5%, they'll use that. And also, I think if CPI is higher than that, they will use the higher number. So it can't be lower than 2.5%. And because of uh, the so-called base effect that we've had because of this uh, uh, crisis in the last 16 months or whatever, uh, the average earnings is supposed to go up by almost 8% by November this year. November is when they use the data to decide the increase. So from November last year, there's been a big increase in earnings. Is that because the economy is doing well? No, because they shut everything down before that and people have come back. So actually, pensioners might get an almost 10% increase, which will be very disruptive, of course, because the economy uh, is still suffering. Uh, I, there's still, I think, 4 million people on furlough. Uh, it looks like they're going to bring another uh, lockdown 
to the UK economy. The hospitality, the uh, pubs, the hotels, uh, events, industry is on its knees, except for the big <laughs> corporations, except for things like football, of course. And uh, why is that important? Well, because this uh, sector of the economy that's being hurt is almost 10% of the economy. It, it, uh, tourism as well, I would include in that. And the ancillary businesses that depend on this is probably even more than 10%. So, and that segues into the crack up boom, uh, into the uh, currency collapse or hyperinflation. Yeah, what, what happens uh, during a, a period of crack up boom or hyperinflation is that the economy actually is on its knees, it's not doing well. Some people think hyperinflation or inflation can only happen if the economy is overheating. We're hearing a lot of that, which is total rubbish, especially from central bankers and the Keynesian economists. They're saying that inflation is picking up because the economy is coming back. Uh, that's what I saw yesterday about Europe. They're blaming it on the economy coming back. But the economies are not coming back. Yes, well, they are coming back slightly, but they're, they're not back to where it used to be pre-2020, and they never will, uh, at least for, for many, many years or decades, I would say. Yeah, uh, and that's uh, a symptom, that's a condition for uh, hyperinflation or the crack-up boom. Political instability is part of it as well, social unrest as well is part of it and uh, yeah and another symptom is speculation is uh, a small group of people enriching themselves and I'm gonna come to a book that I've recommended many times and I'm gonna go through a chapter um, that shows it but uh, we've seen recently or yesterday there's uh, a headlines about the fact that uh, President Biden is going to have the CDC moratorium extended, <laughs> uh, and that's to do with uh, eviction moratorium. And you might ask, what, what does the uh, CDC have to do with uh, whether someone pays his rent or not? Well, that's the way it is, but they're talking about it, as you can see here. CNBC sources tell Reuters CDC eviction moratorium extension expected Biden administration expected to extend federal eviction moratorium by a month US officials you you get the idea here so if the economy is doing really well why are they having to do that uh, the same thing in the UK for commercial property there's talk that uh, the government is going to extend uh, some kind of moratorium for the commercial uh, tenants um, yeah and uh, yeah, the economy is doing well, right? Uh, we've got the ECB continuing to print money out of thin air because the e EU economy is doing so well, right? And the other thing I saw yesterday on Twitter was uh, a tweet here from Rudy Havenstein. <laughs> I would follow him. He, he's quite a good guy to follow. And uh, Rudolf von Havenstein, of course, was the uh, head of the German Central Bank, the Reichsbank, during the uh, Weimar collapse of 1923, currency collapse. But he, he, he tweeted this out. Wealth of world's billionaires rose five trillion amid pandemic. Forbes list finds Jeff Bezos topped Forbes annual billionaires list for the fourth year in a row. So... Yeah, that is not a sign of a great economy, world economy or U.S. economy, whatever you want to call it. That's a sign of this madness, uh, this mad monetary system that we have. So with that, let's go through uh, not all of it, but a good part of chapter two uh, of fiat money inflation in France, how it came, what it brought and how it ended by Andrew Dixon White. This is a, the story of France, post-revolutionary France. What well, was kind of during the revolution, but um, also the period, the, the period just after it from like 1790 to 1796, 
where the French experimented with QE on a massive scale. Uh, it wasn't called QE, of course. It, it was called uh, the Assignats or the Mandats after that. Uh, they printed money. Uh, and actually, it wasn't completely out of thin air at first. It was backed by church lands, uh, church properties, but even that didn't help. So this is what chapter two says. I'm going to read here so you, you can uh, see <laughs> that it's very similar to what's happening today. Even worse than this was the breaking down of the morals of the country at large, resulting from the sudden building up of ostentatious wealth in a few large cities and from the gambling speculative spirit spreading from these to the small towns and rural districts. So yeah, um, gambling spirit, Robin Hood, Wall Street Bet, um, the hedge funds, the billionaires, right? From this was developed an even more disgraceful result, the decay of a true sense of national good faith, the patriotism uh, which the fear of the absolute ma monarchy, the machinations of the, the court party, the menaces of the army and threats of all monarchical Europe had been unable to shake was gradually disintegrated by the same speculative stock jobbing habit fostered by the super abundant currency. Well, think of M1, M2, how it's become abundant. Uh, you probably seen the charts that I showed yesterday of M2 and here's M1 as well, right? Super abundant currency. At the outset, in the discussions preliminary to the first issue of Paper Money, Mirabeau and others who had favored it had insisted that patriotism as well as an enlightened, enlightened self-interest would lead the people to keep up the value of paper money. Uh, the very opposite of this was now revealed, for these appeared as another outgrowth of this disease, what has always been seen under similar circumstances. It is a result of previous and a cause of future evils. The out outgrowth was a vast debtor class in the nation. Well, there you go. <laughs> we got the moratorium uh, coming up. Well, because there's a vast debtor class directly interested in the depreciation of the currency in which they were to pay their debts. Well, that's also the hedge funds and Wall Street and the city of London, because how do you think they make their billions, uh, hundreds of billions uh, of trading profits while they take on a lot of debt to leverage their um, positions? And uh, they want to keep uh, <laughs> uh, this debt coming, the currency coming, the depreciation of the currency, because it makes their assets look worth a lot more. The nucleus of this class was formed by those who had purchased the church lands from the government. Only small payments down had been required and the remainder was to be paid in deferred installments. More debt, right? An indebtedness of a multitude of people had thus been created to the amount of hundreds of millions. Uh, today, I guess we can think of uh, hundreds of trillions, even quadrillions. Think about the uh, derivative uh, notional amount. It's probably over two quadrillion now. We don't know because it's not transparent. This body of debtors soon saw, of course, that their interest was to depreciate the currency in which their debts were to be, be paid. And these were speedily joined by a far more influential class, by the class whose speculative tendencies had been stimulated by the abundance of paper money and who had gone largely into debt looking for a rise in nominal values. Uh, I can think of Michael Saylor, the Bitcoin uh, guy <laughs> who is urging everyone to get a mortgage to buy Bitcoin. I can think of the private equity uh, groups who are buying up assets, uh, who are buying real estate. How do you think they do that? They do that through borrowing uh, at almost uh, zero, which is, of course, something that you and I can't do to borrow at zero percent. 
But uh, yeah, that's why these people are going to keep calling for more and more inflation, for more and more QE. Soon, demagogues of the viler sort in the political clubs began to pander to it. A little later, important persons in this debtor class were to be found intriguing in the assembly, first in its seats and later in more conspicuous place, places of public trust. Before long, the debtor class became a powerful body extending through all ranks of society. Well, th there you go, the bankers, Wall Street, City of London, they're in charge now, yet also the pharmaceutical complex is in charge. From the stock gambler who sat in the assembly to the small land speculator in the rural districts from the sleek inventor of canards on the paris exchange to the lying stock jobber in the market town all pressed vigorously for new issues of paper money all were apparently able to demonstrate to the people that in new issues of paper lay the only chance of national prosperity so there you go uh, we still have a chance to get out of the system, to pay off our debts, to protect ourselves with uh, money or currency, if you want to call it as well, because gold and silver have been currency, uh, natural currencies in the free market. We have time still to protect ourselves, to get out of the depreciating fiat currencies. And it's not only in the US, it's not only in the UK, it's everywhere around the world. It's a, a world disease, <laughs> it's universal disease. And we still have time. Uh, and as I've said many times, it's really hard to know when uh, this will happen, the final collapse of fiat currency or the assignats. Here they were able to keep it going for about six years. Um, and it was only one country, of course. Um, nowadays, it's been happening since 1971, 73. Yet yeah, Nixon closed the gold window in 71, but it was only in 1973 that the major countries of the world went off a fixed exchange rate system. Uh, so after 73, they were able to inflate away. Um, yeah, I can't tell you when it will happen, but I would say all the symptoms that we saw in France in the 1790s and also in Germany, I recommend this one as well. I'm not gonna reference this today. It's all the same symptoms uh, we have the few wealthy getting very wealthy. We've got the middle class falling into poverty. Uh, we've got speculation. Uh, we've got a lot of debt. We got leverage. We got gambling. We got social unrest, societal unrest. I mean, uh, I don't have to go through what's going on today. Uh, I mean, we all know what's going on society wise. Um, Division-wise, or the woke uh, agenda, uh, it's amazing. I, I think uh, those people uh, who expect deflation could be right, but they are also going to be wrong because I, I think we're going to have the crack-up boom uh, and the collapse of the currency before. Yeah, and and then it will be a deflationary collapse. If you look back at the Great Depression in the '30s. Uh, the uh, upper class, you know, the very wealthy weren't getting wealthy. Their wealth was decimated. Right now, it's the opposite. So that's why I don't see a, a deflationary collapse coming anytime soon. It will be a hyperinflationary collapse. And then, of course, there will be no money uh, around except gold and silver because the, the paper money will be destroyed. And even the 1%, the, the people who have become billionaires or who, the billionaires who have increased their wealth in the last 16 months, uh, they, they will be wiped out to a big extent because all the paper wealth they think they have will be completely written off. So there you go. Uh, with that, let's quickly uh, look at where the markets are this morning. It's 9.04 a.m. London time. I'm a little later today. Uh, the uh, guys finished painting the house, so uh, they're not arriving as early anymore because they're not they're finished. So we've got spot gold 
at 1777.60, down just over a dollar. Yeah, gold and silver are still in a very tight, narrow range. Uh, doesn't seem to be much direction here. Uh, the other thing I would say, I think we're coming to a point where economic data uh, econo or statistics, market indicators won't really matter very soon, uh, even though I go through where the markets are, uh, like I do every morning. Uh, so anyway, we've got spot silver, 25.94, up 5 cents. The high has been 26, uh, the low 25.80. Uh, the Dow future uh, is up 136.4%. NASDAQ 100 futures up uh, 67, half a percent as well. Uh, S&P future is up 17 points, 0.4 of a percent. Uh, the currencies, sterling is unchanged, 139.64. Uh, the euro is uh, unchanged as well, 119.30. The dollar is down slightly versus the yen at 110.89. And, and the dollar is backed up a little bit. Uh, it's at 647.50 versus the U1. Aussie dollar is at 75.77. So Aussie dollar continued to uh, pick up after dropping below 75 earlier in the week. I would expect the Aussie dollar to continue higher uh, as commodities start picking up again. I don't think the uh, bull market uh, in commodities or the bear market in fiat currencies, especially the dollar, is over by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> seeing that I expect a crack up boom. Uh, WTI crude, 73.37, up half a percent. High grade copper down 1.3% at 426.56. And the 10 year yield uh, is at 150 up just over one and a half basis points. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.